Hi everybody, Beth here from Access Paranormal for this week's I Want to Know, which is all about the God Helmet and what the God has it got to do with paranormal investigating. Now, some of you may have heard of the God Helmet before, and some may not. And there's a couple of terms, but um, I'll talk a little bit about what it actually is, um, the effects, some of the research that's been going on, and also the most important question, what has it got to do with paranormal investigating? Hi, Mel. So glad you could join me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not with your husband tonight. <laughs> Mel has a very famous husband, by the way. So it's an inside joke. So um, the God Helmet, what is it? Well, um, it's a particular device. Firstly, it was actually created by a gentleman named um, Dr. Persinger. And he, um, uh, there's actually been another uh, type of form of it as well, which someone has also created. And I think it's called the Corrin Helmet by Stanley Corrin. Um, he also created it, his own version, but it was also based on the specifications that um, Dr. Persinger actually had created with his. Um, <laughs> and um, so he's, he's created this particular device, which is, and as I said, it's, it's that the God Helmet is actually not the term that's meant to be used for it, really. It's... It's you. It's it's been called by something else, but it's but when journalists uh, years ago had, were actually covering the particular story um, about the research and, and the experiences that people were having while using this device, uh, it's getting interesting. Um, they were actually uh, saying, you know, that um, the the experiences that people were actually having were like they were either talking to God or speaking to God or having very very deep spiritual experiences so that's why journalists originally came up with that term it wasn't actually the inventor itself that was actually doing it hi chris good to see you here matey so is that as well now um when i when i researched this years ago and on and off every time i see a picture of it it looks like a really bad gridiron helmet um from like 50 years ago but in fact it's actually a crash helmet and the crash helmet actually has um electrodes within it that alter the magnetic fields of your temporal lobes. So that's how it actually works. Hi, Barry. Good to see you, lovely. Good to see you, Brooke. I'm going to be seeing you fairly soon as well, lovely. Um, so that's what it is. So it's actually a helmet that actually affects um, uh, like the electromagnetic parts um, of the temporal lobes of, of your brain. Um, and, and the way that it's set up is, is very similar to what is also known as the Gansfeld experiment. My camera is acting paranormal. Um, uh, it's actually uh, like the Gansfeld experiment. So if anyone knows of it or has heard of Gansfeld, which is G-A-N-Z-E-L-D, <laughs> not field, but Feld, um, that's actually, so it's more about sensory deprivation. So you um, cover one of the senses, whether it be hearing or sight or anything like that, and it forces the, the brain and the mind and the body to actually uh, focus on other parts, other senses to be able to survive and, and whatever experiment you're doing. With regards to the God, um, God Helmet, it's a similar situation from the Gunsfeld, which is uh, very much about sensory deprivation of the eyes. So what they do is they actually... <laughs> I'm going to shoot this thing. Um, <laughs> it's actually um, um, ping pong balls cut in half and put over your eyes. So it's obviously it's kind of made sort of thing and looks creepy as all get out. I should you not. Um, I've, I've, I've done it for myself and you just, I mean, just the look of it looks creepier than actually um, going through it. Um, but it's over your eyes and it's to simulate your eyes being shut all the time. So it does let just enough light in, but not to the point where obviously, you know, your sensory, your eyes are actually covered in this particular part. So when you're wearing this device that affects and has all these electrodes going on and, and censoring um, off with your, your lobes in your brain, um, your eyes are actually covered as well. So people are apparently having quite deep spiritual and paranormal experiences when they actually um, go through this particular process and, and the research apparently that has been done with, with regards to that as well. Now, because of that, when um, what happens is then when they put this particular device on and your eyes are covered as such, um, it's actually basically saying uh, that the device itself is saying to the brain that the left temporal lobe is telling the right side of your brain that there's actually a presence there. Now, that's a big thing a lot of people report when they go through this experience. And we're talking like half an hour here that they say, um, you know, I feel like there was something with me. I felt somebody near me, all this kind of stuff. So that's a big thing. And that's off. That's an explanation for that. Um, people also, as I said, um, a big 
point of it is the fact they feel like they're speaking to God or they're talking to God. Um, also demons as well. So it doesn't always have to be something that's positive. It can actually be something that's quite negative as well. Um, and also that uh, people aren't told about other people's experiences before they go in, apparently before they go into this particular type of experiment, which has been running by Dr. Um, Persinger. So they'll, they won't be told of previous experiences. They'll go in there um, and they're meant to be having sort of a clean slate you know, put this on, put this on, tell us what you think kind of thing. So apparently that's been happening, which is interesting if there's correlating experiences that are the same when people haven't been told previously of the other persons as well. Um, and there's also a lot of people say that they sense that there's something nearby as well. So they sense that there's a nearby, you know, presence near them or with them, which is really quite interesting um, when they go through this kind of stuff. Now, the strength of the what's being emitted from the god helmet is apparently only about on par with something you'd find in your hair dryer so it's not a lot but it's the long exposure of it um and the fact that it's in a particular setting which is quite interesting as well um now of course i don't i don't believe in god um i'm not religious in any way so with with me you know putting a device on like this you know what would happen I, I find it really interesting that um you know a lot of people are having experiences where they feel they're speaking to god but um you know if i was to put that on am i going to be having a chat with jesus and a toast type thing so um uh the flip side of that there's a gentleman named uh, richard dawkins who's actually quite a well-known skeptic he actually uh put himself forward and said i, I want to go and, and and test this out and do this myself um, I mean, a very big atheist and that kind of thing um, the only thing that he was able to report having when he went through a series of um, experiments with it and tests if you want to call it that is that was slight dizziness was one thing um, and he felt tingling in the legs as well so there was there was some physiological uh, distinction that that he felt that was different to what would be normal but nothing from visual hallucinations nothing audible in any way shape or form as well so it's interesting someone who might be predisposed to having religious thoughts and ideas or being open spiritually um, and being quite vocal about that might actually experience more than somebody who's is already walking in with with their mind quite closed on those particular subjects as well now of course there is another type of helmet called the shakti helmet um, and that only uses uh, magnetic coils as opposed to the other type style of, of helmet. Um, and it uses two EEG um, signals that are taken, um, that actually were taken up different parts of the brain, which is actually your amygdala and your um, hippocampus. Oh my God, I always get the pronunciation wrong. My pronunciation is terrible if you haven't already noticed. So um, it can be taken from those two parts of the brain. And they're the ones that um, usually induce really quite strong religious um, experiences. Um, and also what this particular device actually is trying to do, which is slightly different to the God helmet, is actually induce what people feel they go through when they have a near-death experience or an NDE. So there's the other side of that as well. So there's been some um, research being done on that too. So if you want to have a look at that as well. Um, you can actually buy a device. I think it's called the Shiv Shivra um uh neuro stimulation uh, system if you're really keen um it's all over 650 dollars us um i would highly recommend you research the ass out of it before you even remotely um look at purchasing or parting with that kind of money for anything regardless let it be for a device like this but apparently there are devices that you can buy that actually um uh, do simulate something quite similar to the to the god helmet even as of now so but do your research please do your research now um the thing is obviously the big question about this of course is how on earth does this relate to the paranormal or the paranormal investigators um experiences and what we do well as you can imagine the, the types of um the fact that you know paranormal experiences like this are being claimed to be felt in a lab is a big thing in some regard if this is what's actually happening and i say it is happening but um, the legitimacy of it uh, and I say that because there have been articles and information written where people have tried to create these particular experiments themselves and not the, the guy that's created the device and they've not had the same um, intensity of experiences with the people that have come through and done this um, you know uh, Dr Persinger said that he had a, a, almost up to 80 percent of people were experiencing something quite spiritual and quite strong and and religious and anything like that yet other people have had much 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 lower um rates of success with any type of experiences so take it with a grain of salt do a little bit of research but it but it is, is interesting to see that there's a possibility of someone who may be actually being able to create possible paranormal experiences in a lab environment so that's one thing i found really interesting 
How does that relate to paranormal um, investigating? What is the possibility of these types of environmental changes that affect the brain enough for us to feel like we're having an experience so you know that the, the the level of um you know the, those electromagnetic fields i mean the, the earth's got its own magnetic field it comes from the core um we're surrounded by emf where it's natural emf or man-made emf you've got ac dc all that kind of stuff it's interesting the fact that that has uh, for some people makes um, an experience a paranormal experience so it's something to keep in mind when we're dealing with cases where we are as far as locations some places um, in the earth do have uh, higher levels of mag uh, magnetic energy um, and also are high levels of emf as well so maybe keeping that in mind if people are possibly reporting possible paranormal experiences i know it's extremely low if it is natural um, and but that's just something to keep in mind if you are dealing with cases um, all around the world, but also in what could also be termed as most haunted places. Like, I mean, let's think of Juni. Maybe there could be something with the land there. A lot of people say that, you know, Monte Cristo is the most haunted building in Australia. Um, you know, it could be something to do with the location, if that's the case, as opposed to the actually, um, which could be fueling what may possibly be happening there as well. Hi, Karen. Good to see you, lovely. So there's a couple of things to keep in mind. As I said, the, the type of phenomena that people are experiencing is hearing things and seeing things. Feeling cold is another thing that a lot of people actually experience while wearing this particular device so these things are really quite similar with people who feel like they're having a, a haunting experience so it's really important that's the correlation where you know this is something that can be created in an environment um, on purpose where um, we're looking at phenomena that's spontaneous uh, when it comes to possible paranormal phenomena and um, experiences so I will post a couple of links there is uh, one that um, was on the show called uh, paranormal state Ryan Buell, most people probably know him if you are a paranormal investigator, controversial or not for whatever has happened to him. This is a couple of experiences he had while he uh, used the, a device that was quite similar um, while doing a case. Um, but there's also a couple of interviews I'll post links to as well. One which is from uh, with Susan Blackmore, uh, Dr. Susan Blackmore, who I sat with, um, and did the panel with last year at the Skeptics Convention. Beautiful woman. Very, very, very intelligent lady. Um, I think oh, very highly of her. So I'll post that as well. And a couple other links as well with, where the actual owner and creator has spoken a bit about um, the God Helmet and why and, and people's experiences too. So get a bit of a feel for it. And if it's something you want to research as well, let me know. And also your experiences. As always, I love to know your thoughts. Use the comment section down below. Um, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think it, it could be feasible? Do you think it's all a big bag of you know what? Let me know. I'd love to know. Uh, I think it's good the great discussions that we have here on I Want to Know and also on YouTube and um, on the website too. So do take care. Thank you so much for watching. Until next week. See ya.